Okay, so we're going to be covering the Business Insights Explorer today. Business Insights is one of the modules that you have in your MAS system. And as I open up my modules on the left here, I see that's one of my folder options. If I open that up, I see that there is an Explore folder underneath that. This is the tool we're going to be talking about today. So there are a couple, um, couple different ways to access the Business Insights Explorer. As you've seen, I've gone to the Business Insights menu here, and this has a listing of all the menus, all the Business Insights views that are in the system now. So how many views you have in your particular software will depend on what version you have. This uh, tool was released as starting at version 4.2, and they've added some pieces to it. So if you have a slightly newer version than that, you'll, you'll have the full, uh, full number of views like I've got. Another way you can access these views is through each module. So each module has an Explore folder, like the one here in Accounts Receivable. And if you open that up, you'll see the views relative specifically to that module and that module only. So with that in mind, we're going to uh, go ahead and open a view here. And I'm going to go to the uh, sales orders view to start with. OK, let me uh, see if I can resize that a little bit. There we go. All right, so this is kind of like the starting point for the Business Insights Explorer. And again, we're in the sales order view. So we're going to give you kind of an orientation to what how the screen is organized. So this, uh, big, this big pane on the left here is what's called the navigation pane. Um, this changes various things. We have a task button, so we're seeing Mass90 tasks here. If we change it to the Explore, we'll see that there's some other types of views that we can go into. Um, we'll change the data over here. And then there's the Preview pane which will change the data in the lower part of the grid. So if we, if we change items here, we'll see that the information changes below. There's not a lot of data in some of those. There's one. So we're going to come back here to line items. Other things that you'll need to know about, there's several toolbars up here. And you can kind of control with the, the view settings which ones you have. Mine has them all up here. So there's a, a view toolbar. That's just uh, these forward and back buttons type things here. There's an Explore toolbar, which is this one right here with the settings in it. And this one here is called the Tools toolbar. And then we have the Data toolbar. So you can move these things around. And um, we'll be using some of these toolbars as we go through the demonstration today. The other, the main parts of the screen here are this sort of top grid that you're looking at. That's what they're calling the Data View grid. I sometimes call it the primary grid. The lower grid is, is the preview pane. And basically, the way this works is as I select different records on the top, I'm seeing the, re, the detailed information about those records down below. So as I change the records above, it changes the information down below. OK, now let's talk about some of the functionality here. Um, this, this navigation pane can kind of be turned on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and just X to get it out of the way. Give us a little more on the screen here to look at. So each of these columns has a little sort of drop down arrow. So these are really just like the data filter in Excel, if you're ever familiar with that. So for example, I could click the drop down button here. I could pick to show me just the Division 01. Then I'm seeing just the Division 01 information. And it's probably hard to see on your screen, but when I filtered it like that, it, it shows me that it's filtered by this little pointy arrow right here. It turns blue. They're black on all the other columns. And that's probably hard to see, but take my word for it. Anytime we've filtered a view, we have this little button down here that tells us we've got a filter going on. So it's telling us the division is set to 01. So we know we're not seeing all the information. And I can change it back like that. Or I can do custom, just like I could in Excel. So there's a, a filter builder here. And you can go in and do filters like this. You could say the division is 01, and the order date 
let's see, do I have order date up there? The order total is, I'm going to say order total is greater than a thousand. Hit apply and it will filter that data for me. Again, I see that right here in this little filter thing right here, this little checkbox tells me it's filtered and what it's filtered by. If I want to save that filter for later use, I can just uncheck it and it returns me back to that. If I want to put it back, I can just check that box or see what other filters I might have in here to choose from, as opposed to deleting the filter altogether. You can also sort on any of these columns themselves. So, and I'm just going to turn all the filters off right now. So if I wanted to sort, for example, by the customer number, I can just double click a column like such. And again, it's probably hard to see, but there's a little kind of almost almost invisible triangle pointing up, meaning it's, ascend, it's sorting this you know, in ascending order, starting with the A's. If I had to click that again, it goes the other way. I can also control the order of the columns here. And this is real simple to do. I can just grab a field, for example, like the PO number. And if I want to put that next to the customer's name, I can just drag that anywhere I want it right there. So I can move left and right. Very flexible, very easy. I can also remove fields that I don't need. So let's say, for example, we don't want to keep the deposit field. If I scroll over here. It looks like this company doesn't really do deposits. I'm going to say that's a piece of information I don't need. I'm going to get rid of that by dragging it off the screen in any direction that I so choose. In this case, I'm going to throw mine off the top. Took it right out. I'm also going to get rid of the tax schedule. Let's say I don't want that. This time, I'm going to drag it off to the left. So that's how easy it is to get rid of things. Now let's say, you know, well, I'd kind of like to have a field that, that's not in here. So we can, of course, pick from any of the standard mass fields. There's a couple different ways to do that. The easiest way is to put your mouse kind of over this top bar and do a right click and then go to column settings. That's going to open up a screen here that we're going to be kind of going in and out of a few times today. But here are all the basic fields that come in the view stock. And I'm going to come down here and see if we're going to add. I don't see anything. I don't see the state that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Add button here. I'm going to go to the Sales Order table. And I'm going to find the customer's state. And uh, there's Bill to state right there. So if it isn't a standard field for the view, it doesn't mean that you can't add it. So I just went and pulled it from the Sales Order table. That's one of the tables I have to pick from for this view. Whenever we add a new field like that, it shows up on the right here. So I'm going to move that over here next to their name. So this is, uh, you know, we're kind of customizing this as we go. Now what we're going to do is show you how to kind of do some grouping in data. So for anybody who's ever done any crystal reports, you know that uh, grouping is a way of sort of getting some subtotals and kind of, you know, grouping the data together for aggregation purposes. So what we're going to do is we're going to group this by the state. So this little pane up here that's kind of gray right now, this is what's called the grouping pane. So if I want to do a group, all I have to do is find the column of data that I want to group by, in this case the bill to state, and I just drag that up there. And now I have grouped this data by state. So for example, here it's telling me there's the California items, and there's 13 of those, and there's the Wisconsin items, and there's 15 of those, and so on. Now grouping, you can do multiple layers of grouping. Right now I'm grouped by the state, but let's say we wanted to group by the sales rep in addition. So I wanted a subtotal for each one. So I can grab the salesperson now, and I can group it by that. So now within California, I have just Ginny's items grouped together, Harvey's items grouped together, and so on. Well, this is pretty helpful, but it would be nice if we actually um, wanted to see, let's say we wanted to see how many orders we had for these people. Well, we're going to put in our first formula. We're going to make it a simple one to start with. So if you, you can do formulas in Business Insights Explorer. To add a formula, I'm going to right click and go to column settings again. 
and I'm going to do a calculated field this time. I'm going to click this calculated button. I'm going to make this one a, a real simple formula, and we're going to call it count. And my expression is going to be equal to 1. Pretty simple formula. Now I'm going to be able to do some settings over here. I'm going to tell it the format. I'm going to make this a numeric field, because that's going to give me some capabilities to do some things on the other side. So there it is. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have the count over here, expression of 1. So now we want to do some subtotals and totals for these groups. So the first button we're going to add is this one. This is my, um, my group summary footer button right here. So if I click that, it's going to open up some fields down here. It's going to give me a place to put in some figures. And some of these fields are numeric. You've got some different choices. So I'm just going to hover over a column, uh, a value here, and I'm going to right-click my mouse, and I'll see that these are the built-in formulas I can pick from. So and this is numeric. I'm going to put sum for that one, a sum for that one, and I'll put just sum in some of these. You notice it's adding them to all those groups. And sum. OK. So that's fantastic. Now I've got subtotals for each rep by state, and I've got a total for each state. That's what this line right here is. This is the California total. Now what I want is a, re a grand total for my whole report. So this icon right here is going to give us our summary footer. I'm going to click that, and that's going to open up some things at the very bottom of the whole report here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to sum these dollar fields up. And for our count formula, this is just going to tell us, basically, how many total orders we have in our system. OK. So, so far, so good. Now, there's a lot of, lot of exporting that you can do with Business Insights Explorer. And we'll see a couple examples of that today. Um, but you can only export things that are in this upper grid, this data view grid. So if you wanted to export something that was in the grid down below, you can do what's called drill into preview. Okay, and there I'm in I'm drilled into that. So if this is the if this is the thing I wanted to export, I could. It isn't in this example, so I'm just going to go back. I'm just showing you how you could get that up there. Now, if I really wanted this in Excel, let's say I wanted to manipulate in Excel, it's really pretty easy to do. All I have to do is go over to the File menu here and choose Export Options, and then pick what I want. I'm going to turn that Selected Records Only off because I want everything. So I'm going to choose Microsoft Excel. And it just dropped the data right here into Excel for me. And then I could work with this in Excel all I needed to. So pretty, pretty clean. And the thing that's nice about these Business Insights exports to Excel is it does a very good job of lining up the data in nice, clean columns like this. If anybody's ever had an experience exporting Crystal Reports, you'll note the value of that. That doesn't normally happen. So it's, it exports to Excel very nicely. And then once you're in Excel, of course, you can do whatever you like to do in Excel. Now you'll notice that there are quite a few other export options in here. So you can do things into Access. We're going to do a, a word merge later. Um, but So you can see there's some other options there. We're not going to go through every single one. OK. Next thing we're going to show you is a little bit of charting. So there's a, we're on this data grid tab right here. We're going to talk about the chart tab for a minute. So really nice graphical tool here. We're just going to give it a title. title. They didn't hire me for my typing. And you've got several choices of the types of charts you'd like to have. I'm going to stick with the bar chart for now. You can tell it how many data points you want. 
You can choose to have it be a 3D. And I'm going to graph the count of orders. I'm going to group it by, I don't know, I'm going to do it by rep here. Whoops, salesperson. And there we have it, um, grouping by rep. So now we can kind of see who's got the most activity. If we wanted to change it to dollars, we could focus on the dollar end of it. So real nice capability there. You can also email this stuff. So if I wanted to send this out to somebody, maybe I'm on the data view grid, I can say file, send page by email. And what that will do is it will insert that information, just like so, into an email. And then you can send it off to whoever it needs to go to. So pretty convenient for distribution purposes. OK. And then what I can do is, after I've modified a setting like this, I can then save this for future, year, for future use. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, file. Save setting as, and we're just going to say we're going to call it the uh, orders orders by state view. And we can make this a public setting or a private setting. So a public setting means that anybody can access your 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 screen here, your view that you've saved. A private setting means that other people can see it, but they can't change it. So if it's public, they can use it and change it as well. I'm going to leave mine as a public for now. OK, so I've saved it. Now what would happen is, when I first come in here now, the next time, the standard view will be what's there. But as I build out and customize my views, I'll have the option to choose from my other views that I've saved. So if I want to get my orders by state back, along with my chart and all the things I've done to it, there it is, right there. OK. Now let's say, let's see here. We're going to change the view here, and we're going to we're going to do another example. We're going to do a mail merge. So for that one, we're going to use the customer view. So the, the uh, scenario we're going to do with this one is we're just going to say we're looking. We have some new customers, and we want to be able to send them a welcome letter. You know saying welcome to the company, give them their account number, tell them their credit limit, maybe give them their sales rep information and a phone number to call. <clears throat> so there's an option to do this. And when I exported it before, in the last session, in the last little view we were in, I exported everything. So one of the things to kind of be aware of when you're going to export or merge things is you have an option to do selected records only. So if that's not checked, it means you're going to take all the records. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that option on and make sure it's turned on before I try to export. So I'm going to go ahead and pick some records just at random here. Let's see, we'll do this one and that one. And we'll pick these guys and maybe one more. And then we're going to go into our export options. And this time, we're going to do a mail merge. You see we can merge with different products, just like we can export to different products. In this case, we're going to do a Microsoft Word merge. OK, so now I'm in Microsoft Word. And what we do here is we just type a letter like we normally would. And then we're going to insert some merge fields. There's the customer name.
Okay, and then we're going to give them their account ID, which is going to be a combination of their division and customer number. That's how Sage knows the customers, of course. And we're going to tell them what their credit limit is. And we'll tell them their, who their salesperson is. Okay, so there it is. We've got sort of a template design now. And then what we're going to do is hit the Finish and Merge, and we're going to ask it to edit the individual documents. So there it is. We picked, uh, I don't know, it was four or five customers. Here's the first document. As you can see, it's inserted their name, given them their account number. It's got their credit limit and the name of their, their rep. Pretty straightforward stuff. We'll just take a look down here real quick and see if the other record's populated as well. There's our Breslin customer with its information, and so on and so forth. So that's how the word would work. The word merge would work. Okay. All right, so that's the word merge. Now we're going to take it up a notch. To show you this next piece, I'm actually going to get into another system where I've got something kind of pre-designed. Kind of roll in a couple concepts all together here. OK. So. One of the things we want to do is kind of set the big picture is, you know, it's great to be able to go into a tool like the BIE Explorer and play around with moving fields around and kind of creating dashboards and exports and charts and emailing and all that. That's all great. But there's really another kind of layer that you can do to really make this a really powerful tool. And I'm just going to kind of give you an example. So one of the examples we're going to kind of cover today, I'm going to show you a customer screen. Hopefully we've all got customers. Hopefully they're paying customers. But sometimes customers pay late. So we're going to go through an example of how we might incorporate other pieces to the system with the Business Insights Explorer to help kind of control business areas that are problems for us. So in this example, we've got a customer, customer screens that have their tab number nine has been added for them. And this is a custom tab. And you can add custom tabs with the custom office module. So what we've done here is we've added a tab called collections. And we've added some various fields. These are fields that I just made up nilly-willy that I said I would want to use for my collections efforts. So every customer record has this tab. And if they have collection issues, there's going to be information in here. So we have a call date. We have a caller ID drop box where we can pick different people. We have a status checkbox here. And then we have a notes checkbox. But these could really be, hypothetically, any fields that you might have in your system for any particular purpose. So as I scroll through here, we'll see that there is some information in some of these fields. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bring this into the fold with the Business Insights Explorer. OK, so let me find a, uh, let me find a customer here. I'm going to make the call date on this one today. And we're going to put in a note that he said that the dog ate his invoice. Please send a replacement. We'll say that uh, Ramin was the one who called. And we're going to tell it that it's in progress. And then we're going to say accept. And we're going to go ahead and close that screen now. And we're going to go into a collections view. So explore, we're going to go into the customer view here. Now this is the out of the can sort of stock customer view. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at one that I've customized a little bit, and we're going to show a few more customizations to it. So up here, I'm going to go ahead and pick my collections view. And notice I've already done some 
grouping and I've changed some of the fields around. One of the things I wanted to point out was that we have some, some custom fields in here. This total balance was a, was a formula. You'll see that there's some color coding going on in spots. And we're just going to add a couple things. So I noticed that I've got a total balance, a current balance, and I've got my different aging categories. And the aging is a little off because this is demo data. But I'm going to go ahead and add a just a past due balance field. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my column settings. I'm going to do a calculated field. And I'm going to make it past due. Past due amount. So when I'm building a, a formula, this one's going to be a slightly more complicated, but still pretty easy. I need to, you know, I can use other calculated fields, or I can use just the standard fields, or both. In this case, the fields I want are in this category here. And the total pass due is the aging category one through four. So what I'm going to do is just click that. And I'm just hitting add add and add. And I'm going to click OK. Whoops, it didn't like something there. Now let me try that again. Aha, there it was. I think I got it twice. OK, likes that better. Now you can, of course, set the width. But another really cool thing that you can do uh, with the Business Insights Explorer is that you can do some column level formatting. So I could just return a number, and that could be sufficient. But if I really want to add some power, some visual reference to it, I can tell it that it's a currency field. And then I can choose this box right here to do a column level formatter. And right here, what I'm going to do is say if, if they have a pass to balance, I'm going to make it show in red. So if that's a positive number, it's going to show in red. At least that's the idea. OK, so let's see where it did it. It's got my field over here. I'm going to go ahead and drag it over to where I want it with my other, other amount fields. So now I've got a total balance, a current balance, my past due amount, plus my aging categories. Really nice to draw some power to the to the screen. If I wanted to just format an existing field as red, I could simply just go into the column settings, find the field that I want, and tell it to use the column level formatter and go ahead and put the data in here, just like I did for the last one. So it doesn't have to be a calculated field, in other words, to use the color formatting. I just added it to the standard field aging category four. Okay, now we're gonna now we're gonna do a slightly more complicated formula. We're gonna do a formula that uses another formula. So you can get fairly complicated with your formulas in here. We're gonna show a credit limit variance in here. So let's see, do we have the credit limit in here? I don't see it yet. So I'm gonna go back to my column settings, do a calculated field. Now let's see if we can And that's just going to be their credit limit, which is lives in the customer. So here's our credit limit. And minus their total balance. And total balance is a formula. So I'm just going to put that in there like that, say OK. And then I'm going to format this. Say it's numeric. And I'm going to say, they're within their credit limit. They're going to be green. And if they are over their credit limit, they are red. And we're going to click OK. And 
and we're going to bring that credit over here. And if I wanted to add the credit field itself, I just go back to my column selection. Whoops, it's not the one I want. Column settings. Let's see if we can find the credit limit. There it is. Check the box. It's already a native field. All I had to do was pick it. Scroll over here where it added it. Did it add it? Oh, there it is. I see it. Put it over there to the left. Aha. All right. So there's the credit limit and the credit limit variance. So you can see it's doing our math. Okay. Uh, let's see what else do we want to show you here. Oh, okay. So one of the things we mentioned in our collection example is that we had some custom fields in there. So I want to kind of highlight those now. So here is this information where we've brought in these user, what we call user-defined fields. And there's our last call date. And then here is our call notes. Now here's the record right there where the dog ate the invoice. As soon as you enter data in a record, like the customer record where we entered that, that data is immediately moved over here. So it's immediate for, available for immediate use. OK, so now here's an, here's an example of how you might, might use this in this example. So if we turn on the navigation pane again, like so, we could be using this information to use it like a collections dashboard. So we could say, hey, we're going to be calling this customer right here based on this information. And their phone number's over here. So we'd be calling on that number. We could be talking to them. And we could immediately start taking notes. So may, let's say that Allen's Appliance, or probably A to Z would be a better example, because, because they actually have some bigger past due amounts. But we could be talking to them. And let's say we talk them into giving us a credit card payment over the phone. So what I could do here, if I had the credit card module installed, I could go right into cash receipts. Oh, it's opening up down here. And get a batch number and, and enter a deposit or a credit card deposit in this example. Finish the deposit out, which I'm not going to do because it's not a cash receipts class. Go ahead and charge it and get that information. Then I could you know, thank the customer, get off the phone with them. I could click Customer Maintenance now. Go right into that customer. Notice it brings up just the customer I was highlighted on. Go into my Collections tab, put in my notes. OK, and then I could accept that, close it, move on to my next call. So that's a way to really kind of work back and forth with the data, going back and forth between various tasks in these screens. I'm going to make a chart real quick. Oh, here's my past due by sales rep. Again, the charting is fairly simple. You can also copy this information right into Excel. If I get a new workbook here, you can paste it right into Excel like so. So it's not just the data. You can also use these charts in Excel. 